Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. In a nearby solar system, the James Webb Space Telescope has detected a habitable world, the first habitable world ever discovered outside our own solar system, and in addition to that, it appears to have life, multicellular life. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome once again to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So uh, yeah, some very exciting stuff coming up in this particular episode, but real quick, want to thank all of those folks who have shown up for my tour events thus far. Thank you very much to my viewers in the Orlando area, in Pittsburgh, in Toronto, and finally in Cincinnati. Some unusually large groups have come in spite of the difficulties involved in coming to these events. Thank you so much. And what I have coming up right now is going to be LA followed by Flagstaff and then ending in Denver and the reason for that is my Colorado arrangements fell through and I need to find another location and uh, frankly I would prefer to take care of the locations where I have a confirmed spot before I try to set up another one so if you happen to live in the Denver area and you are aware of some sort of meeting space that has enough room for 30 or so people please email me I'm looking for a budget of $300 maximum for this, but please email me um, so that I can get this taken care of. Again, folks taking care of this groundwork really makes a big difference to my ability to complete this tour. And finally, if you want to support the tour, well, all of the details are in the description. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about this amazing discovery from the James Webb Space Telescope. So at this point, I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard about this planet, this uh, super Earth as it is called. It doesn't necessarily strike me as being a particularly fantastic place to look for life or for a habitable planet. It's a super Earth. It's many times more massive than our own planet, and it's orbiting a cool dwarf star not the type of star that we orbit, nothing at all like our own sun. So why would it be so habitable? Well, interestingly enough, we have been studying this planet for a very, very long time, actually before James Webb was even deployed. We knew that there was water vapor in the atmosphere of this planet. We also knew that it was orbiting in the Goldilocks zone of its given star, we knew a lot of other things before James Webb gave us this additional information. But what we know now is that this planet is very likely what's called a Hycean planet, a water world, and that it very possibly has life in its oceans. The planet in question is called K218b. It's actually a mini Neptune, or at least that's what we call it, even though it's probably nothing like Neptune, but in terms of size, a bit like Neptune, yes, about 2.6 times Earth's diameter and 8.6 times more massive than our planet. In other words, colossal gravity, not necessarily the best place for life. It's 124 or so light years away, orbiting a red dwarf. Again, not necessarily ideal for life because red dwarfs tend to put out a large amount of radiation when they flare up. But this is where the capabilities of the James Webb Space Telescope become so incredibly useful because it can take all of these hypotheses and throw them on their collective heads if it can find tangible evidence of not only a habitable world, but a world that has thriving life forms on it. And it may very well be that James Webb has discovered just that. When planets pass in front of their host stars, in this case, this particular planet was observed on two different occasions by James Webb while it was passing in front of its star, their atmospheres can be observed in great detail, and we can determine what their atmospheres are like by how they affect starlight traveling through them. And what James 
Webb found on two separate occasions. Again, these studies were made twice because red dwarfs have a tendency of flaring from time to time and messing up spectrographic readings, but on both occasions, a significant amount of methane and carbon dioxide was detected, but without the presence of ammonia, and these combinations combined with the water vapor that's been detected in the past suggests that this might be a Haitian world. Yeah, I mispronounced it before when I said Haitian. A Haitian world, which is a rocky world characterized by a worldwide ocean and an icy mantle down deep beneath the ocean. In addition to that, it has a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Now, of course, this would not be the most conducive place for our type of life. However, deep in the oceans, it would be extremely conducive to life developing, and the oceans would provide more than adequate protection for any life developing there, even if the red dwarf was flaring up. Now, carbon dioxide is a biosignature, but not a great biosignature because it can be produced abiotically as well. However, something else was detected in these most recent readings, and this is what has everybody so excited, dimethyl sulfide. And the only way that you can create dimethyl sulfide, at least as far as we know, is through industrial activity, that is to say technology, or by some sort of life form creating it. And generally, dimethyl sulfide tends to be associated with various types of oceanic plankton. So in other words, not single-celled organisms, but multi-celled organisms, and also the type of organisms that we would expect to find on an ocean world. Now, if these readings are confirmed, and to be clear, they are not confirmed at this time, more readings definitely need to be taken to confirm the existence of these biosignatures, but if they do indeed exist, then we are looking at life forms that may have developed under much much different conditions than life on Earth. And interestingly enough, if there are multicellular organisms on this planet, they developed very quickly because this sun is at its oldest about 3 billion years old or over 1.5 billion years younger than our own star. And if you have multicellular organisms developing that rapidly, it may suggest very interesting things about life forms that may develop orbiting other red dwarf stars. But here's what's so exciting about K218b. Up to this point, all of this was theoretical. Even though Haitian worlds were becoming an increasingly promising place to look for alien life, there were no biosignature gases detected on any Haitian world up to this point. Now, that has all changed. James Webb has indeed detected a biosignature gas and a very obvious one on K218. B. And if this is confirmed, then we have very solid evidence for the existence of multicellular life on another planet outside our solar system for the first time ever. And not only that, it suggests that Haitian worlds and other solar systems may also be promising places to look for life, because they can thrive much more freely on these types of worlds. A world that has a planet-wide ocean can be habitable even if the planet is tidally locked, that is to say, with one side of the planet permanently facing the host star. This is called a dark Haitian world, and the reason that it's habitable is the heat from the side of the planet that's facing the star and bringing the oceans up to extremely high temperatures can be carried by the liquid of this planet-wide ocean to the dark side of the Haitian world, heating up that side of the planet and its ocean to a perfect temperature for life as we know it. Consequently, because these planets are so much more conducive for life to exist, the habitable zone has proven 
proven to be absolutely gigantic compared to the terrestrial habitable zone, that is to say, for conventional rocky planets like our own, for life to exist easily. As you can see, the Haitian habitable zone is utterly gigantic compared to the terrestrial habitable zone. That being the case then, quite a number of exoplanets have already been identified that may indeed be habitable Haitian worlds. Indeed, an article entitled Habitability and Biosignatures of Haitian Worlds, published in the Astrophysical Journal in 2021, linked in the description, has identified 11 exoplanets that we have already detected that may be habitable Haitian worlds. They fall within the habitable zone. They're the right size, the right temperature. We just haven't scanned them for the right types of biosignatures yet, although James Webb is the perfect instrument for doing this. Unfortunately, however, James Webb is being primarily used to study the distant universe and not nearby stars. And yes, that is its primary purpose. However, as far as getting the public interested in the importance of astronomy, wouldn't it be better if we use this instrument to detect life in another solar system rather than a far away quasar and what it might have looked like 15 billion years ago? Even more compelling is the fact that life on a Haitian world might be very, very different to life on Earth. Even though we do have deep oceans, of course, on our planet, Haitian worlds would be primarily deep ocean environments with little or no light. Keep in mind that red dwarf stars don't create a great deal of light to begin with, and on dark Haitian worlds where the habitable zone is on the opposite side of the planet, well that would never receive starlight at all in the first place. So you would be looking for life forms that might be able to generate their own luminescence, or perhaps they would have another way way of seeking out prey or other food sources. In addition to that, keep in mind that this would be a high gravity world, although the presence of abundant water would lessen the impact of such high gravity on the life forms involved. They wouldn't suffer from the crushing effects of gravity the way terrestrial animals would. It would certainly have an impact on their internal organs and things like that, but anything that could survive the extreme pressure of the depths of these oceans, and by the way, Haitian oceans could be hundreds of kilometers deep, something that boggles the imagination compared to our oceans here on this planet, but it could make for extremely varied types of life forms. And by the way, also, some of these Haitian worlds are orbiting stars that are much older than ours, meaning that evolution has been going on on these worlds for a much longer time than it's been going on on our planet, meaning that it could have far greater diversity and far more advanced types of life forms than we have on our own planet. Unfortunately, on Haitian worlds without the ability to create their own electricity, their own fire, that sort of thing, those sorts of things are difficult to make underwater, they probably aren't technologically sophisticated, no matter how intelligent they might be. However, it's also important to note that dimethyl sulfide is not just a biosignature, it's also theoretically a technosignature, which means that we need to be pointing radio telescopes towards this planet as well, looking for signals, because even though a technological civilization on a Haitian world seems pretty unlikely, we shouldn't rule it out totally. What a strange experience that would be if we were to receive some sort of strange signal near the hydrogen line from a planet where we have already sensed the telltale signs of life. And we should be focusing James Webb's efforts on scanning this planet as soon as possible. It orbits its sun every few weeks anyway, giving us many opportunities to scan the sunlight passing through its atmosphere. If we can confirm the existence of this biosignature gas, then we have almost definitely found life beyond our solar system. And what? could be more exciting than that. Please like, 
please subscribe. It's very important to the success of my channel. And also, please check the description for various ways to support my tour so I can wrap this up. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay angry about space. <laughs>